Hey guys, it's me. This is going to be a very um, unpopular video among women who are taking birth control pills, but I wanted to create a video just to increase awareness on what's going on because I'm seeing a lot of problems with the long-term effects of women that take birth control pills. So there's two reasons why they take it. Number one, to prevent pregnancy. Number two, because their cycle is very uncomfortable or not regular. Okay, so birth control um, is basically estrogen, but there's other forms of birth control pill. They might add a little bit of this, a little bit of that, but there's, there's risk factors that are attached to birth control pills. Number one, uh, cancer. Um, if, if a woman gets breast cancer and then she's treated, they usually put her on tamoxifen. That's an anti-estrogen drug. It blocks estrogen. Why? Because estrogen triggers cancer. But the problem is it's not your body's own production of estrogen that, that makes the cancer. It's environmental estrogen. There's things in the environment like pesticides, insecticides, herbicides, and also chemicals in the f food supply that mimic estrogen. And you're basically, your body's bathed with estrogen. GMO foods influence estrogen too. Genetically modified foods, it's in a lot of soy and corn and stuff that you don't even realize you're eating, especially in the animal industry. So cancer is a big one. Number one, number two is fibroids. Fibroids are, are little mini tumors in the uterus. They can be outside the uterus, but a lot of women are getting those because of the estrogen dominance type situation. They have too much estrogen. And then we have endometriosis. That's another side effect of too much estrogen. And so if you have endometriosis or fibroids, what do they normally do? They take them out, but they grow back. Why? Because they haven't fix the root cause. There's some environmental estrogen in the food supply that they're eating that's triggering these. Um, it also could be their own ovaries producing too much estrogen too, but that's usually triggered by the environment. And then what do they do? They do a hysterectomy. So then they remove those organs or they might take off like a partial hysterectomy and leave the ovaries. But guess what? The adrenal glands back them up and the adrenal glands make estrogen. So we, we go from one problem to the next, like you get an overactive adrenal gland, which causes belly fat. That's why women that get hysterectomies start getting more weight gain in the midsection. So then we have um, low thyroid, because when you increase estrogen, you decrease the thyroid hormone. And that's really what's underneath a lot of thyroid conditions, because they usually get a thyroid problem after pregnancy, because of the spike in estrogen. But no one ever checks the estrogen thing. They just treat the thyroid, but they never lose weight because it's the wrong problem. So with low thyroid, yeast infections, acne, weight gain, mainly in the hips, in the breast area, and the upper bodies, the little po pooch below the belly button, the buttocks, that's all estrogen dominant. And I will guarantee uh, those people who have that tend to have more estrogen dominance or exposed to estrogen. Cysts. They might have cysts in the ovaries. They might have cysts in the breast. That's an estrogen problem. And just so you know, as a one really good natural remedy is sea kelp. Sea kelp has iodine. And iodine, natural plant-based iodine, is really good to regulate and lower the excess estrogen in the body. So that, that, and I would also recommend the cruciferous food. Those two together are really, really good. But you might say, yeah, but I don't want to, to create a thyroid problem because cruciferous decreases iodine. Well, that's well, you're taking sea kelp. So sea kelp with cruciferous, perfect combination. All right, so now what are some alternatives if you want to um, you know, avoid getting pregnant, right? Condoms, both for females and males, diaphragm, and the Lady Q stick. I don't know if you've ever heard of that. You can get them online. They're little uh, like microscopes that you can put your saliva on one side and look up to the light. And if you're ovulating, that means that you're very fertile. There's like a four day uh, window uh, at day 15 or mid cycle um, where you're the most chance for getting pregnant. And you'll see a kind of an image of a fern because the hormones kind of um, uh, cause this appearance in your saliva, which is interesting. I don't know why, but it does. Or if you're not ovulating, there'll be little specks. So you can kind of have a little guideline. So if you did this and this, I think you'd be pretty protected. Um, but I'm just kind of talking about, you just need to make up your own mind if, if, it's, if it's worth it um, and the risk factors. If you absolutely have to take estrogen, then make sure you're doing cruciferous 
to kind of prevent certain types of cancers and organic iodine from the plant-based sea kelp just to help regulate that because at least that'll give you some protection against the estrogen dominant and don't ever take it for as long as a lot of people like like you should probably seven years is the max so those are some some alternatives that you can do um, but I want to just kind of bring up your awareness and if the ovary itself is creating heavy periods excessive bleeding PMS and that's why you're taking this I'm going to create some videos on some really great solutions that you can nat do naturally upcoming in the next couple of weeks so stay tuned on that but at least I wanted to give you awareness on this problem with this it is a problem and it doesn't usually happen right away but it's over a few years. All right, I'll see you in the next video.